Japanese government officials have been trying to find more places to dispose of radioactive debris created by the accident at Fukushima Daiichi. An environment ministry official says they found a second site to put the waste, which includes mud and ash. It's located in a national forest. Senior Vice Environment Minister Katsuhiko Yokomitsu met with Governor Masaru Hashimoto of Ibaraki Prefecture to discuss the plan. Ibaraki is just south of Fukushima. Yokomitsu says they chose the forest because it's far from residential areas. It offers enough space and it can withstand earthquakes and torrential rains. Hashimoto says he needs to consult with residents and municipalities. Yokomitsu visited the mayor of the nearby city of Takahagi, Yoshio Kusama, says he's opposed to the disposal plan. So are many residents. I'm against the plan for the sake of our children's futures. I understand that there must be a site somewhere, but I can't completely agree with this. The Japanese government owns the land that would be used for the site, so it doesn't need municipal approval. Officials plan to start constructing a facility to house the debris as early as next summer. Before that, they're expected to keep talking to municipal authorities and residents to win their support. They've already got one disposal site for radioactive debris. It's in neighboring Tochigi Prefecture. A town in western Japan held a drill on Thursday to build temporary bridges to restore access should coastal roads become impassable due to tsunami. It's feared that Nachikatsura town in Wakayama prefecture could be hit by waves as high as 18 meters in the event of a major earthquake. Scientists say such a quake could occur along the Nankai Trough of Japan's Pacific coast. The drill was carried out on the assumption that a bridge on National Road had been washed away by a tsunami. Local contractors took just over an hour to erect a makeshift steel span over a 10-meter wide waterway. They also practiced building makeshift passages for emergency vehicles across the wider stream by laying down pipes a meter and a half in diameter in the water and pouring earth and sand over them. The land ministry says it will store the required building materials in the town so that it will be able to have a makeshift bridge up and operating within two days of an earthquake. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has urged the international community to draw a red line that Iran should not cross in its nuclear program. There is only one way to peacefully prevent Iran from getting atomic bombs, and that's by placing a clear red line. Netanyahu made the remark in his address to the UN General Assembly in New York on Thursday. He said it's getting very late to stop Iran and that the country could have enough enriched uranium for a nuclear weapon by next summer. Netanyahu sees Iran's nuclear development as a threat to the security of Israel. The Israeli Prime Minister said that the international sanctions against Iran are insufficient to make the country abandon its nuclear program. Scientists in Japan are claiming a first. They say they've created the 113th atomic element. Researchers at an institute called Niken announced the achievement. They made the element with the aid of a particle accelerator. An international organization must confirm the team's results. That would allow Niken to become the first Asian research institute to name a new element. I'm confident in the results and that the creation of a new element is a big step for science. 
Scientists around the world have been competing to discover and confirm the existence of new elements. はい、止まります。地獄。空に花垂れた大きな風船。上空 Also present there was Mariko Bender. She is an advocate for children of Fukushima and also a leader with the World Network for Saving Children from Radiation. And she spoke about those issues as well as a disturbing new social trend that is occurring in Japan where women of Fukushima are now considered by some to be undesirable spouses because of the potential for nuclear mutations during childbirth. Thank you for the opportunity to talk to this today. I am here to represent Fukushima children. I am Michael Bender, a Japanese citizen living in the United States. But I have taken my sons to Japan every year since my son was four months old. So it was greatly a part of my life. I was once a Fukushima child. Remember Godzilla? The Godzilla monster attacked Fukushima. <laughs> he was born from a nuclear explosion. Who could imagine Godzilla would haunt us almost 60 years later? It's ironic, a Fukushima man created him. Fukushima was beautiful. Its mountains, its lakes, hot springs, parks with ponds and cherry blossom trees. Now, radiation took over. This radiation has spread to California and across the United States. It continues to spread out and contaminate the soil, the ocean, and our planet. This can happen to you, and it's going going. Dr. Helen Caldicott said, if Unit 4 collapses, I will evacuate my family from Boston. Not from Japan, from Boston. We are about 550 miles away from Culver Cliffs, 
and 96 miles from North Island. How safe are we really? When we told that nuclear power is safe and the accident wouldn't occur. Did you know that in Japan, the usual one millisievert has been raised to 20 millisieverts per year, 20 times more. In Chernobyl, anyone exposed to more than five millisieverts a year was evacuated. Others in area of one to five millisieverts were over the relocation. People in Fukushima are trapped in this highly contaminated area. It is as if they are in a gas chamber. People exposed to more than one or five or even more millisieverts a year live there. This is very possible because my father and sister still live in Fukushima too. My father refuses to leave. My sister will not.